Welcome back, this is part 3 of my black and white film workflow. In the last episode, we developed a roll of Ilford HP5 that I shot a couple of weeks ago in Cable Bay and using the different black and white filters to show you the effect they would produce on your images. And now that we have the roll developed, it is time to scan it and edit it. My scanning setup is using a mirrorless camera, a film holder and a small light table made for scanning. After that, I will import the images into Lightroom Classic and use the plugin Negative Lab Pro 3.0 to uh, convert the images from negative to positive. As you can see, this is far from a professional setup. My uh, scanning equipment is just tucked away between the printer and the corner of the table. I don't have a copy stand because I don't have the room for it. But that's the idea behind this series of videos, is that to show you that you can shoot black and white film, you can develop it at home, you can scan it and edit it at home, and you don't need a full complete setup. With a minimal kit, you can do all of that, and it doesn't need to be a dedicated room. Same with the development workflow. If you watch my previous video when we developed this roll of HP5, I did this in my kitchen. So I had to clean out the tabletop, put all of my tools there. And once I was done developing, I had to clean out again, put it away because I need to use the kitchen for other things and just uh, developing black and white film. To get good scans, you'll need a couple of things. And let's start with the light table because I think the light table is the most important aspect of uh, scanning uh, film negatives. For the longest time, I used a cheap light table, which was actually used to draw. So it was one of those illuminated uh, drawing table. And I got decent result with it. But a few months ago, I upgraded to the Cinesteel uh, CS Lite and I made a review about it, you can find above. And what I found is that when using a dedicated light table to scan negatives, you'll get much better results, especially because the Cinesteel CS Lite has a CRI of 95 plus, and CRI is the index to measure the output of the light, the quality of it, and how close it is to natural light. And as soon as I started using the CS Lite, I got much better results with my scan, especially when it comes to colors, because the CS Lite has a three different uh, color mode, depending if you're scanning um, color negative films, positive film, or black and white film. And for the color negative film and the slide film especially, I had much better results. So if there is one item I wouldn't really cheap on, that would be the light table. Next, you'll need some sort of holder to make sure that your negative is flat when you are scanning it. Because if you think that you can just simply lay flat your negatives on your light table, well, you're going to get poor results because the negatives might be slightly curled, which uh, won't have a perfect um, focusing on all of the negatives. You might have only the middle focused, but the corners, because they're curled, will be out of focus and you don't want that. I'm using the Essential Film Holder made by Andrew Clifford. He basically 3D prints those. They're really cheap to get. And uh, you can change the top here, which I'll show you right now. So that you can change the top here, whether if you're scanning 35 or 120, um, there is this little uh, some screw here that you can remove and you remove the top part and then you can change the basically the mask. Um, I'm only using uh, 35 at the moment, but I just started shooting medium format. So I may need to either upgrade the, the top part here or find another solutions to make sure that my medium are also uh, flat. And if you've been using a flatbed scanner in the past, but wish to upgrade to a mirrorless scanning setup, and if you still have that uh, flatbed scanner, well, technically, at first, you could still use that uh, mask they gave you with the scanner to hold your negatives and just uh, lay that thing flat above your light table. And that way, especially at first, if you just wish to try this kind of setup, uh, you could save up on there and not get a film holder at first and just use the one provided with you flatbed scanner as long as you all of the negatives are perfectly laid flat because I used one in the past. And even so with the that's very thin, plasticky older. Some of my negatives were still sometimes curled and that's why I upgraded to the essential film holder. Next, you need some sort of camera to scan your negatives. It can be any type of camera. Generally, I'm using the R5C, but it's filming at the moment. So for this session, I'll be using the Canon R6. Um, you can also use a 5D Mark IV or any type of DSLR for that matter. The reason why I like the uh, mirrorless camera is that it's a bit easier to, at first, to if you can have like a flippy screen here to see what you're doing. Here is angled towards me. But even now, I use a cable and I use it in a third mode so I can review and I can actually 
press the shutters and have a preview of the what I'm scanning on the laptop uh, using the EOS utility, but I'm sure they have the equivalent one if you're using Nikon or Fujifilm or whatever. When it comes to the lens, you'll need one with a macro capability. I'm using the EF 100mm 2.8 macro uh, with a ratio of 1 1. It's not the L version, but it still produces excellent results. And like I said, if you want to use a legacy lens, you can try the Nikkor 105 Micro. It's a 2.8 lens. They also have the Nikkor 55 or 60 mil Micro. And if you want to stay in EF, uh, Sigma also has a 105 macro lens, I believe. So all of those lenses are really good to scan. But if you can, I would suggest to use a lens with autofocus. For the longest time, I used this lens uh, in manual focus, thinking the autofocus wouldn't be able to properly get focus on the negative. Turned out I was wrong, and it's perfectly able to get good results with the autofocus, and it's also quicker. Next, you're going to need something to hold steady your camera. I'm using a Manfrotto tripod, which has a central column that can pivot to 90 degrees. Um, it works, but uh, if you are, want to invest into a proper setup and you have the room for it, I would strongly suggest to get a copy stand. Before we get started though, I want to talk about one more thing, and it's light. Obviously, you're using your light table to light the negative from below, which makes sure that the negative is properly exposed in camera. One thing that people tend to forget when they start scanning the negative is that the light around you might impact the final results. And although we're going to flip the negatives to scan the immersion side so that the side is not shiny, well, it can still reflect some of the light around you, and you don't want that because once you convert the images, you might get some odd spotlight there and there on some of your negatives. That's most likely due to the ambient light you have around you. So if you are scanning into your office and you have the light on on your ceiling, turn that off. Same if you have some sort of like desktop light, turn it off. If like me here, you have a window, shut the curtain off so that only the light source table shines through the negatives and there's like one light source and that multiple light source are maybe different color temperatures which will create odd results once you convert the images. So once I actually start scanning, I'll have to shut those light off and you'll see my computer screen. But before that, I want to show you a small example of how I load the negative onto the older and how I clean it to make sure that most of the dust that's around right now isn't uh, on the negative so that in Lightroom, I don't have to use the uh, dust removal tool too much. All right, let's start scanning. As you can see, there is a new camera behind me just to show you a better idea of what I'm doing in that little corner here. First, I'll tether my camera to my laptop. Launch uh, EOS Utility 3. So that's the software I'm using to control the camera onto the laptop. If you're using Nikon or Fujifilm or Sony, I'm sure they have a similar uh, tool you can use. Now, depending again, this if you shoot with Canon, then this is going to be easier for you. Uh, if you shoot with any other brand, I don't know how their tool works, but basically here, I have this little folder and that's going to be the locations in which the images will be downloaded from the camera to the folder. So I have a very simple way of, I, mean, I wouldn't call it simple, but a very straightforward way for me to organize my images when I scan them. And then it's the same system, whether, whether the naming, for example, is the same on the sheet that's holding negatives to the digital file. So that, uh, for example, if I know that uh, I like negative 25 on my, uh, my film roll here, I can pick up the roll, noisy, but I can go check it out here. And I know that the negative I like on the computers is here if I ever wanted to enlarge that one using uh, enlarger in a dark room. So I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to go to World Final um, 2003, and then it's shot on film, and then here I'm going to create a new folder, and this is BNE50. Okay, <clears throat> so the way I organize them is I have the a sequence here, so BNE because it's black and white, if it will be color, it will be C, uh, and then under dash is going to be the camera I used. This was shot on the F3T. Nikon F3T, and then below under the dash, and I'm going to put the film. So this is HP5. I'm not putting the brand of the film because I know HP5 is Ilford, but you can do that if you want. I'm going to create a new folder. Okay, it's right here, and as you can see, it follows the same way I'm doing it uh, here. I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call the raw scan. And this folder will have the, the raw file from the camera. Create, open, and now it's updated. 
I don't want any subfolder, so I uh, take this, click OK, and now I have raw scan here, and I, have, I can control the camera from here. <clears throat> and we're going to go to preferences. No, sorry. We need to go to live shoot, and you should see on the screen what the camera is actually seeing, which is pretty useful. Um, and then here we're going to change a couple of the settings. So obviously we don't want ISO 64000. Um, the good thing about a very strong um, CRA plus 95 light source is that you are able to keep your ISO very low. Before that, in my previous light table, I had to have my ISO at around like 400, which is still fine with those modern camera. But the lower the ISO, the better, obviously. So I'm going to leave it at 100, which is the minimum. Okay, now you can see nothing because there is no light coming in. And usually I leave it at uh, either f4 or f5.6. I don't need to shut it all the way to f8 with that type of lens. I found that they have really good sharpness throughout the negatives around between f4 and f5.6. It's fine. Auto white balance should be left uh, the same. Okay, and now here I'm going to go to the remote. I'm going to turn it on. Poof. All right. And I have three different modes here on the light um, source, which is cool, cool for negative, white for black and white, and warm for slide. I'm going to leave it to white for black and white. And the last thing I'm going to do is make sure that both the camera and the uh, film holders are uh, leveled. So here I have a top level here, which is perfectly flat. Perfect. And I'm also going to put it on 2D. Wonderful. The reason why I'm doing this is that my essential film holder isn't fully compatible with the light source. The light source is slightly small, so I have to put little makeshift sheen between the, the film holder and the, the light level to make sure it's perfectly, no, there is not, it's not like angle, so it's something to keep in mind, but again, not my, not a professional setup, but it does work. All right, my setup is now complete. I have the light source on, I have the camera third, the folder is made on the computer, so all of the images I'm shooting will be directly imported into that folder. Now you could have an extra step and you could ask Lightroom to directly import the images from a set folder directly into Lightroom Classic. Um, I don't do that because it's, I don't really see the use. And same, you could use Lightroom Classic to set it and control the camera. The reason why I'm using the EOS utility is that for the longest time, the Lightroom Classic uh, module to control the camera was really buggy and sometimes would just randomly disconnect. So I find it's much easier to use the, uh, the Canon EOS utility software for that. Moving on, we're going to grab the film strip here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is, because I developed this myself, I'm going to make sure there is no more watermark, which there are quite a bit on this negative, because um, if you watched this previous episode, you may have seen that my uh, Cleaning agent did like odd uh, em like emulsion, lots of bubble. So I think it was expired and it may have not uh, cleaned the film in the best way. So I'm going to reverse it because I want to shoot the emulsion side and not the shiny side. Although it's quite uh, it's blurry and usable, this is the image zero, which I'll use to make sure that my sequence is uh, good to go. Last thing I want to do is use the blur to make sure that Most of the little dust are gone. And I'm gonna check my exposure here. It's right below the zero, which means that the camera thinks this is the perfect exposure. But what I'm paying attention to is the histogram. The histogram will give you a better idea of what's included into the negative. You'll see two uh, spikes on each side into the shadows and into the the uh, exposure in the highlight, sorry, that's normal because the camera is also seeing the black frame here of the uh, the older and it's also seeing uh, the uh, the white of the between of the film strip between the the exposure so that's normal so only pay attention to what's in the middle so here i have i can see I have my shadows here i have my mid tones and i basically have no uh, highlight uh, loss here and as you can see the camera is focusing by itself and i'm going to click that button here Take your first images. Perfect. Now I'm simply just pushing it to the next one. Perfect. I'm going to make sure the exposure here. I need to remove the quick preview here. All right, now we are far more over super exposed. I'm going to reduce it here. Put one for yes. About there. So here I have my highlight here. Here I have basically mid tones. That's, that's a good exposure. 
finally, the last step is always the blower because if you blow first and then do your settings, the dust can settle again. So wonderful. Okay, everything is in focus here. Yes, as you can see, this slightly shaking. I want to make sure it's not shaking anymore. Oh yeah, that's my neighbor upstairs pondering. So I'm gonna have to wait a little bit. The joy of living into an apartment complex. One, two, three, go. Wonderful, and so on. So you got the gist, it's quite simple. Um, always making sure that first you, you expose your reset correctly. Uh, you pay attention to this, but I'm paying attention more to the histogram here. Again, I have my highlights here, the crest. I have my mint tones towards the shadows. I believe that's what the shot with the green filter, so it's slightly darker. Focus is good, it's ready to go. And shoot away. Camera is still shaking. I don't know why it's shaking so much. And... Good to go. So this was just an example to show you how I'm uh, scanning my film uh, from cleaning it, making sure there is no more uh, unwanted uh, watermark, uh, removing all of the dust, making sure you get the proper exposure, the proper focus. And uh, now I have to actually rescan the first strip and the rest of the roll with those light off to make sure that uh, it's the correct uh, exposure. I'm not going to get unwanted light, especially from the one just above that I know probably created some sort of like odd um, spotlight on the negative, so I'll do that now. And that's my scanning workflow. Once again, while it may not be the most professional setup, it still allows me to get excellent scans. That being said, if you have the room for it, I would definitely suggest getting a copy stand instead of a tripod, as each time I'm scanning, I lose quite a bit of time setting up the tripod, especially if I need to adjust the height of the camera. In the next and final episode, I'll show you my editing workflow in Lightroom Classic to convert negatives to positives using Negative Lab Pro 3.0. It is by far the best plugin to work on negatives. However, I will also show you how to manually convert negatives to positive images. And finally, if you got something out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing so I can do more in the future. Bye for now.